If you are triggered by any of the following subjects, such as depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, suicide, or just mental health in general, you may want to click off this video. But if you decide to stay with us, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get notifications every single time that I post brand new content just like this. When you're manic depression, <laughs> you are either up here and everything's great, or you are down here and you want to die. Nothing ever goes right. Nothing feels right. You never know how long it's going to last. But I do know when it's coming. And the way that I know that it's coming is that I'll be at my manic state. And when I'm manic, I'm happy. I'm so productive at work. I was getting anything and everything done. I felt very secure about the position that I'm in. I was getting along with people. And then one day, I go to bed and I wake up. I didn't feel okay. When I was going through my depression, I had really bad suicidal thoughts. And it's really suckish to want to die but not have a reason to. I, I've never really had any reason to want to die. I've never really had any reason to want to kill myself. But I wanted to because I felt so shitty, because I felt so depressed, because I felt so done. And I don't know why I felt like that. It made sense to me at the time, but I knew in the back of my mind it didn't, you know? There were times that I had to hide all the knives in my house and, and put them in my shed because I just kept thinking to myself, oh, if I just went over and there were times I never wanted to be alone. There were times that, that I knew that if I didn't have my son, I probably would have done it. But he's the reason that I didn't. He's the reason I decided to call the suicide hotline for the first time that I did. He's the reason that I called the second time and the third. He's the reason that I decided to hide all the knives in the shed. I found the thing that I wanted to live for. And it was my kid the whole time. But after my manic stage of being happy, and then I go into the the depression. The first few days, I go through this really awkward stage of not paranoia, but kind of almost where I feel like everyone hates me. Everyone doesn't like me. I feel like people are talking shit about me whenever I walk into a room. You know how you walk into a room, somebody looks at you and you go, what the fuck were you talking about? Like, why the hell are you looking at me? Who the fuck are you to look at me? And it sounds so insane. But you can't help it. You can't help but think that. You take things really personal, no matter what it is. I once made homemade ravioli from scratch. And at the time, my son was like two or three, whatever. And I spent a lot of time on this ravioli. I was very, very proud of it. And I set it in front of him. And he took the plate. And it's like watching a damn cat knock off a glass off a table. He just went, boop, and knocked it onto the floor. Literally sat down right there in the kitchen and cried. And then I got up and I said, oh my god, no, I can't be doing this in front of my kid. I hate breaking down in front of my child. I don't do it anymore. Thank the Lord, hallelujah. But that was before I finally got help. That was before I finally realized that there was an issue and I needed to address it. Otherwise, it could end in, in dire circumstance. So, you know, you have that sense of, I guess, paranoia. That people are talking shit about you. That nobody likes you. That you are just an inconvenience or a nuisance to people. I did. I felt like that. You know, I felt like, oh my god, I'm breaking down in front of my kid. I'm such a horrible parent. And then... I had notions of, oh my god, I can't give my kid everything that he could ever want. I'm such a horrible fucking parent. I'm, he would be so much better without me. <laughs> and that sucks. And then you have those moments of, god, I, I hate everything. 
And that's a few days later after the sense of paranoia or whatever. You thank God. It's not me. It's not me that something's wrong with. I'm, I'm not the thing to blame. Everyone else is. I hate everyone and everything and they can all kiss my ass. You're almost angry with your depression. You hate everybody. You hate everything and you just want to die. <laughs> You're no longer sad. You're pissed off. And you feel like everyone's out to get you. You feel like you're going through so much pain and damage. And you don't really know what to do about it. So you just keep blaming people. And then you blame yourself again for a little while. Oh, it's all my fault that my life is this way. Why does my, have to, my, does my life have to be this way? Why am I living my life this way? And then you wake up again one day and things are fine and I'm happy again and life is okay and oh my god I you know I <laughs> can't believe I felt like that why would I ever feel like that I'm never gonna feel like that again it sucks it does it really really sucks there's only a few moments where I feel normal maybe a few weeks and I put my life back together like it's a puzzle it's like someone else did all of this fucking bullshit, like spending my money and, you know, causing bad relationships with people because I felt like they were out to get me or because I felt like I was being attacked or because I felt like it's their issue. And then, you know, ghosting people or not talking to them. It's hard for me to keep friends. It's hard for me to keep anybody in my life, really. I'm really surprised that my boyfriend has lasted this long. It's so fucking hard because you know that you're doing it, but you can't stop yourself from doing it. So in those few weeks that I feel normal, I'm putting the puzzles back together and I'm going, why the hell did I do this? How the hell did I do this? When did I do this? You know, it's like, God damn, why am I making such stupid decisions? And then you finally get your life back together. You got a good amount of money in your bank account, you got your bills paid, you are eating healthy, you're exercising, you're doing everything right, and then one day you wake up, and it's like, god damn, life is great, I'm so great, everything's great, everything's great, oh my god, awesome, 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 and you're spending money again, and you're happy, and you're making videos, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, and you got, you know, all kinds of great ideas, flowing and creating in your goddamn mind and then holy shit it's back again the depression laying in bed not wanting to get up not wanting to do anything there's nothingness and there's ang anger and aggression and there's the sense of everyone hating you it's it's a crazy crazy fucking roller coaster ride. and i hate it but this is who i am this is my issue I don't know what caused it. I don't know if I was born like this. I tried to change it. I, whenever I finally realized that I had an issue, that I had a problem, I went to a normal doctor and I told her that I didn't want to try antidepressants because I was afraid of them. I mean, antidepressants, that's scary. That's a scary thing. You know, it's a scary idea that you need medication to feel better. You know, both my parents are recovering addicts. And the sense of using medication to feel better has always been a scary notion for me. When I was a kid, I had ADHD, I had to go on Adderall, and I remember being in the fourth grade telling the psychiatrist or psychologist, whatever you want to call it, um, prescribing this drug to me, saying, both my parents are recovering addicts, and I understand that I am more likely and more susceptible to becoming an addict myself, so I would like to not use a bunch of this. And they gave me lower dosages than second graders. I only took it when I was at school. I didn't take it on weekends or holidays or even my fucking birthday. I have always been fairly responsible. 